You are listening to the online streaming service from Emmanuel Church, Hansworth, Birmingham, UK. I want to take you this morning to those verses that were read for us. In Romans chapter 3. If you'll forgive me, I'm actually going to be uh, using the, the 2011 translation in the NIV. But it's all, it's all God's word. Um, and my theme for this morning is this. How can we have a right standing before God? I want to start with a question. What is the single most important paragraph in the whole Bible? I wonder what's going through your mind. Perhaps you're thinking of John chapter 3 from verse 16. <coughs> Or maybe you're thinking of Ephesians chapter 1, from verse 3 to verse 14. That's all one long, amazing sentence of the Apostle Paul. Or maybe it's the Old Testament passage in Isaiah 53. In some ways, it's an unfair question to ask, isn't it? Every word of the Bible is God breathed. And so all of it is important. However, the, the commentator Leon Morris says that the verses we've read this morning are possibly the most important paragraph ever written. For you see, these verses describe what God has done for His people in Christ. At the start of the letter to the Roman Church, Paul declares that he has been set apart by God for the gospel. And then from verse 8 of chapter 1 to verse 15, he tells the church that he longs to visit them and to, and to preach the gospel amongst them. But when we get to verse 18, Paul goes on then through chapter th through to chapter 3 and verse 20 to speak of the of the sinful condition of the human heart. And the penalty that it deserves. In these verses, Paul also points out that the law of God condemns us all. The law was never intended to be a way to righteousness. As verse 20 says, Therefore no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by observing the law. Earlier in the letter, in chapter 1 and verse 17, Paul has already said, in the gospel, a righteousness from God is revealed. A righteousness that is by faith from first to last just as it is written the righteous will live by faith. 
So the opening part of the letter to the Romans establishes a bleak yet realistic picture of what sinful human nature is like. And the description perfectly fits what we see in the world today. These opening verses also establish that is that the righteousness that God requires is more than we can achieve. It's not possible for sinners <coughs> to be righteous in God's sight by our own efforts, however good they may seem to be. Everything about us is sin-stained. But the verses that we're going to look at teach us that a right standing with God is possible. But as a, but as a gift, and only through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. As the Apostle Paul unpacks this, in the verses that we've read, he uses three important words. And these words are justification, redemption, and propitiation. These words are not in common currency today. But they were in Paul's day. So to grasp something of the significance of what these words convey, we must understand three things. The first is righteousness is more than we can manage. That is the implication of verse 21. Paul says, now a righteousness from God, apart from law, has been made known. You see, the righteousness that God requires is set forth in the Old Testament law and also in the words of the prophets. These writings affirm God's standard of righteousness. But Israel's history proves that this is a righteousness more than we can manage. But it is the righteousness we need if we're to be in a right relationship with God. So the good news of these verses is that this righteousness is what God is willing to give us as a gift. That's why verse 21 begins with the words but now a righteousness from God. Has been made known. The second thing we need to realize, and we've already alluded to, is revealed in verse 22. Righteousness is the gift of God. A righteous standing before God 
is given to all those who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's true for anyone. Our ethnic background, our status or intellectual ability, our social class or any other distinction are all irrelevant. Righteousness is the gracious gift to all who believe in the saving work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 22 says, This righteousness from God comes through faith in Jesus Christ. To all who believe, there is no difference. And then the third thing is in verse 23. And that is that righteousness is everyone's need. It's the verse that tells us all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This verse affirms that we're all in the same position. We've all sinned. We've all failed to reach God's righteousness. We've fallen short of the glory of God. We are sinners. I don't know whether you are aware of this, but in archery, when the archer shoots the arrow, but doesn't do it very well and it hits the ground before the target that shot is referred to as a sin the arrow has fallen short so this is one of the key things that we need to understand about our sin. We consistently fall short of the standard that God has set. So let's Look at these three words now that Paul uses. Justification is the first one in verse 24. Where he says we are justified freely by his grace. This is a legal term. That means that the judge has declared that the guilty person is not to be condemned. They have been acquitted. It's worth understanding that's what justification means. I was speaking about this word with someone recently and they thought that justification meant making sure the text on the page neatly fitted both sides. Uh, this was someone who really ought to have known that in the Bible it means something very different. Uh, 
Now, if an earthly judge was to acquit someone who was guilty, we would accuse them of favoritism or failure to understand the law or think that they must have received a bribe. It would be unjust, wouldn't it? However, when God justifies the sinner, this is not the case. How can this be so? Well, first and foremost, we must understand that our sin is an offence against God. So only He has the right to acquit the guilty. And God is able to do this because His Son has satisfied God's justice. <coughs> He's done this on our behalf by enduring the penalty we deserve. This is why the cross is crucial to Christianity. As chapter 8 and verse 1 of Romans says, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And to be in Christ Jesus means to be united to Christ through faith. To have belonged to Christ even before the creation of the world. As Paul puts it in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4, for God chose us in Christ before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in His sight. So we are justified through faith in Christ Jesus. This faith means believing in a very specific way that the Lord Jesus Christ died for my sin personally. He paid the penalty for my sin. And I can be counted not guilty and no longer liable for the penalty that sin deserves. But that is not all. A great exchange has taken place. My sin has been taken away by Christ. For example, in the picture language of Psalm 103, my sin has been taken away as far as the east is from the west. And also, Christ's righteousness has been given to me. The Bible speaks about it being credited to my account. Or as a garment that has been given to me to cover my sinfulness. So the result of this great exchange is that God can declare me righteous in His sight. I can stand before God with no fear of condemnation.
I'm a justified sinner. Kyunki main ek rasbas papi hai jara ke rasbas thehraya gaya. As Paul says in Romans 8 and verse 10. Romeo 8:10 vich Paulus kanda those God predestined he also called those he called he also justified do you know that you are a justified sinner through faith in Christ Jesus tonu pata is gal da ke prabhu yeshu masih de dwara tusi apne paap ton ras baaz kite hoye thehraye hoye insaan hai ge is waqt because if you want to be right with god je tusi rab de naal sahi hona chahunde ha na it is essential that you know this lazmi hai ke tusi janu is gal nu not just know about it in your head sirf dimag de aqal de naal janna kafi nahi hega but know it in your experience of your relationship with god yeh thoda rishta tajarba hai ga parmeshwar de naal ode vich us us nu janu so that's the first word justify pehla lafz hai ke jehda das pas thehra jana The second word word is also in verse 24. Jo vi adhe jitsan nu jo vi adhe han dusra lafz milda. It says we're justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. Jo vi ad magar uske fazl ke sabab us makhlasi ke wasile se jo Yeshu Masi mein hai muft rasbazi mein rasbaz thare ho jate ho. So our word is redemption. Makhlasi nastara This is a term taken from the world of business. Ek karobar de duniya vichon lafz gile gaya makhlasi ya nastara and would have been a word originally used in the context of the slave market. Gujer gulama de vyapar de mandi hagi ya sigi ode vichon eh lafz leya gaya hega. A slave could buy his freedom by paying the ransom. Ek gulam apni kimat chaka ke azad kita ja sakda sega. But of course that ransom was paid with money. Wo jira nasara sega, wo jire paise jire kimat sigi, wo paise naal chukoni pehndi sega nu. But God's redemption does not involve money. Wo pumeshya da nasara jira ga odi paise di gal nahi hundi hagi. Romans 6 and verse 23 tells us. Romeo 6:23 vich likhya our sin deserves death. Sada paap jira hega ਉਹ ਮੌਤ ਦਾ ਵਾਜਬ ਮੌਤ ਦਾ ਹੱਕਦਾਰ ਆ ਇਟ ਸੇਸ ਦ ਵੇਜਸ ਆਫ ਸਿਨ ਇਜ਼ ਡੈਥ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਪਾਪ ਦੀ ਮਜ਼ਦੂਰੀ ਮੌਤ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਬਟ ਦ ਗ੍ਰੇਟ ਨਿਊਜ਼ ਇਜ਼ ਪਰ ਖੁਸ਼ੀ ਖਬਰ ਇਹ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਦੈਟ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਸਟ ਹੈਸ ਡਾਈਡ ਇਨ ਆਰ ਪਲੇਸ ਕਿ ਪ੍ਰਭੂ ਯਿਸੂ ਮਸੀਹ ਮੇਰੇ ਬਦਲੇ ਮੇਰੀ ਜਗ੍ਹਾ ਤੇ ਮਰ ਗਿਆ ਹੀ ਪਰਚੇਸਿਸ ਆਰ ਓਨ ਫਰੀਡਮ ਬਾਈ ਹਿਸ ਡੈਥ ਆਪਣੀ ਮੌਤ ਦੇ ਦੁਆਰਾ ਪ੍ਰਭੂ ਯਿਸੂ ਮਸੀਹ ਨੇ ਮੇਰੀ ਆਜ਼ਾਦੀ ਖਰੀਦੀ ਆ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਪ੍ਰੂਫ ਆਫ ਹਿਸ ਡੈਥ ਇਜ਼ ਸੀਨ ਇਨ ਹਿਸ ਸ਼ੈਡ ਬਲੱਡ ਉਹਦੀ ਉਹਦਾ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕੀਮਤ ਹੈਗੀ ਹੈ ਮੌਤ ਦੀ ਕੀਮਤ ਦਾ ਕੀ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਨਿਸ਼ਾਨ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਹਦਾ ਖੂਨ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬਹਾਇਆ ਗਿਆ This is why the New Testament speaks of us being purchased by Christ's blood ਇਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਨਵੇਂ ਨਵੇਂ ਲਿਖਿਆ ਹੈਗਾ ਜਗਾ ਜਗਾ ਕਿ ਪ੍ਰਭੂ ਯਿਸੂ ਮਸੀਹ ਦੇ ਖੂਨ ਦੇ ਦੁਆਰਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਖਰੀਦੇ ਗਏ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ Possibly the verses that make this the clearest are in 1 Peter in chapter 1 ਪਹਿਲੇ ਪਤਰਸ ਇੱਕ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਹ ਆਇਤਾਂ ਦੁਆਰਾ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਸਾਫ਼ ਸਾਫ਼ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗਦਾ Where we read ਅਜੀ ਪੜਦੇ ਆ for you know it was not with perishable things ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਕਿ ਨਾਸ਼ਵਾਨ ਚੀਜ਼ਾਂ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਨਹੀਂ such as silver or gold ਜਿਹਦਾ ਸੋਨਾ ਜਾਂ ਚਾਂਦੀ that you were redeemed ਤੁਸੀਂ ਖਰੀਦੇ ਗਏ ਹੈਗੇ ਆ from the empty way of life ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਦੇ ਖਾਲੀ ਪੰਚੋਂ handed down to you from your ancestors ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਬਜ਼ੁਰਗਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਮਿਲਿਆ ਹੈਗਾ but with the precious blood of Christ ਤੋ ਪ੍ਰਭੂ ਯਿਸੂ ਮਸੀਹ ਦੇ ਬਹੁ ਮੂਲੇ ਖੂਨ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ a lamb without blemish or defect ਉਹ ਮੇਮਨਾ ਜਿਹਚ ਕੋਈ ਕਾਜ ਨਹੀਂ ਸੀਗਾ ਉਹ ਮੇਮਨਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬੇਆਬ ਹੈਗਾ ਬੇਆਬ ਬੇਦਾਗ in the story of the bible ਬਾਈਬਲ ਦੀ ਕਹਾਣੀ ਵਿੱਚ the word redemption nastara loves describes the rescue of israel out of egypt misr de vichon israel da jada nastara kita bachaya gaya ode bare oda hawala hai ga the angel of death spared all those households mot de farishte ne ohna sareya gharan nu chhad ditta where the sign of the blood was over the entrance to the home jithe darwaje de chokhut te ohna ne khoon laya sega memne da the blood came from a lamb sorry the blood came from a lamb o khoon memne memne to aaya killed to save the first born sons ਪਰੋਠਿਆ ਨੂੰ ਨਸਤਾਰਾ ਦੇਣ ਦੇ ਪਰੋਠਿਆ ਨੂੰ ਬਚਾਉਣ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਐਂਡ ਥਿਸ ਵਾਸ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਗੋਡ ਕੰਸਿਡਰਡ ਇਜ਼ਰਾਇਲ ਇਸ ਕਰਕੇ ਪਰਮੇਸ਼ਰ ਨੇ ਚ
his own firstborn. Israel mera palotha beta hai ga mera palothi alada. This is what scripture says. Ye vachan lagda. This is what the Lord says to Pharaoh. Permission ne ki kya Pharaoh nu. Israel is my firstborn son. Israel mera palotha putr hai ga. And I told you. Main tenu kya Let my son go. Mere putter nu jaan de, azad kar de. So that he may worship me. Taaki mera putter ja ke meri ibadat kare. But you refused to let him go. Par tu inkar kita onu janta hu. So I will kill your first born son. Aur main tere palothe putra nu marunga. So Israel were told throughout their history. Israel nu ode sare itihas de vich dasya gaya that they should remember this redemption. with the celebration of the passover fasa de tihar de naal dobara is gal nu puchta tak yaad rakho ke permission ne kidda nastara kita sega thoda kidda thodi jaan bachai segi and this is what pious jews have done even to today kattad yahudi aaj tak vi ehi karde hage a and we as christians vishwas ye ho ke assi celebrate this redemption as he is in the story no kedam manonde hagya when we share in the lord's supper as you the prabhu page prabhu meji as you say lenya the lord jesus is our passover lamb prabhu yeshu msi sada fasada tyohar da memna hagya it's only his blood that saves us from death se prabhu da khoon hai jehda sanu sare paapan da bachaunda hagya hor kuch nahi But Jesus did not die in some general or vaguely hopeful way. But Prabhu Yeshu Masi ko ami be maini vyart trike de naal maut te dwara nahi marya. God's work in his son for our salvation was particular. Parmeshwar da matlab au da kam Prabhu Yeshu Masi di maut te dwara sade layi ik khas maqsad nu pura karan de layi saka. as one of the old choruses that we used to sing as you get going here with the chorus hai ya based on john chapter 10 yohanna 10 de anusar it says this ki likhe ke ki ki gaunde ya he laid down his life for his sheep one apni jaan apni peedan de layi bichati he laid down his life for his sheep one peedan de layi apni peedan de layi apni jaan bichati this shepherd so kind e charwaha kinna dialu hai ga had me in his mind mere bare sochda sa us vele when he laid down his life jadon ore apni jaan de te apni peda de layi mere bare sochda sa us vele prabhu do you know that you are one of the redeemed of the lord tonu pata tonu pata is gal da ki tusi jehde baithe ha tusi parmeshwar de nastara paaye hoye lok hage ha that jesus died for you tode layi prabhu yeshu ji mar gaya tode layi it is essential that you do if you want to be right with god lazmiya is gal nu jaano ਜੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਪਰਮੇਸ਼ਰ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਸਹੀ ਹੋਣਾ ਚਾਹੁੰਦੇ ਹੈਗੇ ਤਾਂ ਅਨ ਦੈਨ ਲਾਸਟਲੀ ਆਖਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਦ ਥਰਡ ਆਫ ਥੀਸ ਵਰਡਸ ਤੀਸਰਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਲਫ਼ਜ਼ ਅਸੀਂ ਦੇਖਿਆ ਸੀਗਾ ਫਾਉਂਡ ਐਟ ਦ ਬਿਗਿਨਿੰਗ ਆਫ ਵਰਸ 25 25 ਆਇਤ ਦੇ ਸ਼ੁਰੂ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਾਇਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਪੀਸ਼ੀਏਸ਼ਨ ਕਫਾਰਾ ਔਰ ਸਮ ਟ੍ਰਾਂਸਲੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਹੈਵ ਇਟ ਕੁਝ ਤਰਜਮਿਆਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੈਗਾ ਐ ਸੈਕਰੀਫਾਈਸ ਆਫ ਅਟੋਨਮੈਂਟ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਮਸਾ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀ This is a word from the world of religion. ਇਹ ਧਰਮ ਦੀ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਲਫ਼ਜ਼ ਲਿਆ ਗਿਆ ਹੈਗਾ It's the word that describes how a sacrifice ਉਹ ਲਫ਼ਜ਼ ਦੱਸਦਾ ਕਿ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ can be the object of God's wrath ਇੱਕ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀ ਪਰਮੇਸ਼ਰ ਦੀ ਗਜ਼ਬ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਗੱਲ ਵੀ ਬਣ ਸਕਦੀ ਆ And so doing and in so doing ਉਹ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ absorb or take away God's wrath towards the sinner ਪਾਪੀ ਦੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਪਰਮੇਸ਼ਰ ਦਾ ਕ੍ਰੋਧ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਹ ਹਟਾਇਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਐਂਡ ਐਕਸਚੇਂਜ ਇਟ ਵਿਦ ਗੋਡਸ ਫੇਵਰ ਔਰ ਪਰਮੇਸ਼ਰ ਦੀ ਦਇਆ ਕਿਰਪਾ ਦੇ ਦੁਆਰਾ ਬਟਾਂਦਰਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਦ ਪ੍ਰੋਪੀਸ਼ੀਏਸ਼ਨ ਕਫਾਰਾ ਦ ਸੈਕਰੀਫਾਈਸ ਦੈਟ ਟਰਨਸ ਅਸਾਈਡ ਗੋਡਸ ਰੋਥ ਕਫਾਰਾ ਉਹ ਹੈਗਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪਰਮੇਸ਼ਰ ਦੇ ਕ੍ਰੋਧ ਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਪਾਸੇ ਕਰ ਦਿੰਦਾ ਇਸ ਦ ਸੈਕਰੀਫਾਈਸ ਆਫਰਡ ਬਾਈ ਅ ਪਰਫੈਕਟ ਸਬਸਟੀਟਿਊਟ ਉਹ ਹੈਗਾ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਿ ਸੰਪੂਰਨ ਬਸ ਬਟਾਂਦਰਾ ਦੇਣ ਵਾਲਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪਰਮੇਸ਼ਰ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਹਦੀ ਕੁਰਬਾਨੀ ਦੁਆਰਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈਗਾ so that god can then look upon us favorably ਫਿਰ ਪਰਮੇਸ਼ਰ ਸਾਡੇ ਵੱਲ ਦਇਆ ਦੀ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਨਾਲ ਜਦੋਂ ਦੇਖਦੇ ਆ and his wrath is replaced by friendship ਪਰਮੇਸ਼ਰ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕ੍ਰੋਧ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਹ ਬਦਲ ਕੇ ਪਿਆਰ ਦੋਸਤੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਦਲ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈਗਾ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਦੋਸਤ ਵੱਲ ਦਾ ਵੰਗਾ ਦੇਖਦਾ ਹੈਗਾ i don't know whether any of you have seen the footage on television about the james webb telescope 
ਉਹਦੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਨੇ ਦੇਖਿਆ ਹੋਗਾ ਟੈਲੀਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਉਤੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਜੇਮਸ ਵੈਬ ਟੈਲੀਸਕੋਪ ਹੈਗਾ ਉਹਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਜੋ ਦਿਖਾਇਆ ਗਿਆ ਸੀਗਾ ਟੈਲੀਵਿਜ਼ਨ ਤੇ This is an amazing telescope that they put out into space ਵੇਕ ਦੂਰ ਵੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਉੱਪਰ ਅੰਬਰਾਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਛੱਡੀ ਹੈਗੀ ਆ so that it can look as far as possible into the universe ke jinna ho sakda unni dur tak aakash ke vich oh dekh sake jithe tak ho sakda hai ka but this telescope is very delicate ve dur bhi jehri hai ke ye bahut nazuk cheez hai ya and has to be protected by a special screen oh khas cheez de naal ohdi hifazat karni pendi hai screen de naal that protects the telescope from the sun's rays suraj di kirna to o bacha ke radhi kithe pas bana hoye hai otherwise the instruments would be destroyed jada o jehri durbin hai gi hai ohne nash hoye na je top jo te top pe jave jadi now in a much greater way ek vadde tarike de naal the word propitiate kafara lafz jada hai ga describes how it's possible for god kis tarah mumkin hai ga parmeshwar de layi to remain righteous rastwas rave whilst at the same time being able to declare sinners so now as righteous but not even case okay ke tu papi hai gaya tu si narak de haqdar ha it's as if there is something that now shields the sinner from god's wrath unik ek cheez hai ki hai jehdi ke papi nu parmeshwar de krodh ton bacha ke rakh diya ek gabbe ek deewar aa jandi hai through the death of christ Parta and the hinda. shedding of his blood cruz se utte prabhu yeshu masi de khoon de bahaye jaan de dwara god demonstrates that he is righteous parmeshwar zahir kar diya ke main rasba saga because god's just wrath kyunki parmeshwar da jehda wajib krodh hai ga is faced by christ oh masi nu oda samna karna paya sade layi he the sinless one ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਬੇਦਾਗ ਬੇਐਬ ਪਰਮੇਸ਼ਰ ਦਾ ਮਿਮਨਾ ਬੇਸ ਦਾ ਪੈਨਲਟੀ ਡਿਜ਼ਰਵਡ ਬਾਈ ਆਵਰ ਸਿਨ ਸਾਡੇ ਪਾਪ ਦੀ ਸਜ਼ਾ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਮਿਲਣੀ ਚਾਹੀਦੀ ਸੀ ਉਹਨੇ ਸਾਰੀ ਦੀ ਸਾਰੀ ਆਪਣੇ ਆਪ ਉੱਤੇ ਲੈ ਲਈ ਐਂਡ ਵੈਨ ਦ ਲੋਰਡ ਜੀਸਸ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਸਟ ਐਕਸਪੀਰੀਅੰਸ ਦ ਫੁੱਲ ਇੰਪੈਕਟ ਆਫ ਗੋਡਸ ਰੋਥ ਔਰ ਜਦੋਂ ਜਿਸ ਵਕਤ ਪ੍ਰਭੂ ਯਿਸੂ ਮਸੀਹ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਪਿਤਾ ਪਰਮੇਸ਼ਰ ਦੇ ਪੂਰੇ ਗਜ਼ਬ ਦਾ ਕ੍ਰੋਧ ਦਾ ਸਾਹਮਣਾ ਜਦੋਂ ਕੋਈ ਬੋਝ ਦਾ ਸਾਹਮਣਾ ਕਰਨਾ ਪਿਆ ਉਹਨੂੰ he did so for all the stored up wrath of god ohne kita oh sara parmeshwar ande jehda gussa karo jehda bhareya sega parmeshwar ande andar ohde lokan de layi oh sara prabhu yeshu se utte unde laya gaya against the sins committed throughout the whole of the old testament period rane ne de jinne vi paap kite gaye sige sare paapa da bojh jehda hai ga gussa jehda sega krodh jehda sega oh sara prabhu yeshu se utte laya gaya that's what verse 25 is telling but yes no he does the but he also don't fear we absorb the wrath of god but we should the crowd no le lea for all the generations of those who would sin up until the end of time or so sab da ke jo guna pesh tar se ho chuke se aur jin se khuda ne tamal kiya dil sara krodh prabhu ne apne aap utte le jehde pushta ne paap kite sige krodh sige hun prabhu de le prabhu de corona de layi oh sare prabhu ne apne aap utte le liya as it says elsewhere in the new testament no one if hold will likha ga christ is the propitiation for our sins prabhu yeshu si sade paapa da kafara hai ga and not only for ours sirf sade ne kalya de but also for the sins of the whole world sari duniya de paapa da kafara hai ga prabhu da so through christ's death on the cross sleep the prabhu yeshu masi de maut de dwara god's wrath is turned aside from us purusha da krodh hon sat ton chukya gaya it's as if it's been absorbed and no longer falls upon us prabhu ne apne aap prabhu yeshu masi apne aap te le liya hon sade te nahi dekhda ga prabhu da krodh kafa prabhu yeshu masi ne apne aap te sare le liya we receive this pardon and righteousness through faith vishwas de dwara sanu maafi aur sanu rastbazi mil diya bakhshish mil diya faith in the lord jesus christ prabhu yeshu masi de vich vishwas rakhna because god's just and holy wrath jo ki parmeshwar da sahi wajib rast baaz krodh jada hai ga siga has been propitiated oda kafara onu mil gaya now do you rejoice in knowing that you no longer deserving of god's wrath ki tusi khush hunne is gall nu jaan ke apne dil de vich ki jada krodh parmeshwar da thode te hona chahida siga pita parmeshwar da hun oh thode te chukya gaya hai ga that you no longer under god's condemnation aur tusi parmeshwar di bojh odi shara thalle ode krodh thalle nahi hage you will do 
if you only truly know that Christ has laid down his life And so as we come to verse 26, we can see how these truths are summed up in the last few words. We could say God is just. And the one who justifies those who have faith in Jesus. And this is true for all those who've trusted in God and His mercy. From the beginning of the Old Testament. And going right the way through to the last day when the Lord Jesus Christ appears. And we see that as an example in Romans chapter 4. Where Paul speaks about Abraham. And his faith. So since Christ's death. All those who believe and trust in Christ's death and in his resurrection to deal with their sin are made righteous in Christ. The righteousness we have in order to be accepted by God is not our own not even a tiny part of our own but Christ's alone Jesus Christ is our righteousness which is why one of the old hymns that we, we sing from time to time says Jesus, your blood and righteousness. Yeshu tera khuna, teri rastbazi. My beauty are my glorious dress. E meri sundarta hai gya, aur meri sardha ta jaga. Mid burning worlds in these arrayed. E jere dunia, jere kirna hai gya, jere jaloniya hai gya, chiza nu. With joy. Khushi dana teri dhramat on diya. I shall lift up my head. O zindagi mein agge guzaroon ga, jo tumhne bakshiya gya. And to that we say hallelujah. Amen. Amen.